Aloha. My name is Roger Jelinek. I'm executive director of the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. And I'm excited and pleased uh, to <clears throat> start this particular session, which promises to be quite amazing uh, and certainly entertaining and also uh, illuminating about a most extraordinary career. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to um, Mama and uh, put questions in the chat. Uh, and also in the chat, put your name and where you come from. So we have an idea of who our audience is. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mama. You gotta unmute yourself, Marna. All right, I was muted there for a minute. We're really happy to be here today and to share with you what Eddie always shared, my husband, Eddie Kamai of over 50 years. And we're going to go through his journey today with some of the music and some of the songs that he sang and his group, the Sons of Hawaii sang. We're gonna start with the song that Eddie always opened every session practically with this song, Hana Kiyoki, we want to share it with you, at least part of it. Here we go. Kapena, can you hit it? <laughs> Kunili Okalani wrote many beautiful songs. When I first got interested in Hawaiian music, it was through her songs that made me move on and go down to the, the boondocks and the gullies and look for our kupunas. Uh, this song is titled Hana Kiyoki. It's about a place on East Maui, a place called uh, in the area of uh, close to Hana. Kipahulu, Hana Kiyoki by Liliuka Landi. Thank you, Kapana. Joining us today will be Kapana Shim and Lily Noy. Um, Lily Noy, all of a sudden I'm going, Lily Noy, Lily Noy Andrews. <laughs> I should know them because every week for two years, we got together and we talked about the songs, the translation, the stories, finding resource material, and coming up with the journey of Eddie Kamai, the musical journey, the one that there's so many more songs, but these are some of his favorites. And we're really looking forward to sharing with you today some of the stories, some of the things that made this special for us. In the late 50s and early 60s, this group, the Sons of Hawaii, Eddie Kamai, Feet Rogers, the still guitar player, Gabby Pahinui, the great guitarist, 
Roberts, black key guitarist and singer, and Joe Marshall came up with this sound that made people stand up and take notice that something different was happening. They were setting the stage for something we all know as a Hawaiian cultural renaissance. And songs like this was one of the reasons. I just wanted to say, I had the great pleasure of working with Kapana Shim and Lily Noy Andrews to create something that I think Eddie would be very proud of. The reason why we did this was because musicians started asking me for songs. And I thought, okay, I'll do a few songs. And I'll look for the translations and I'll look for the things that would mean something to them. And I was telling Manette Benham, who's chancellor of UH West Oahu, I said, she said, what are you doing nowadays? And I said, well, I'm doing these songs. And she goes, well, why don't you do a songbook? And I thought, oh, that'll be really easy. <laughs> but guess what? It was the hardest thing that we have ever done. And I think the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, even though we did 10 documentaries and um, either created or were part of 19 uh, CDs, audio cassettes. And by the way, you can find a lot of that on HawaiianLegacyFoundation.org and also the EddieKamaiSongbook.org. It's all free. I mean, the songbook is. The, of course, the CDs and the DVDs might cost a little bit. But I just want to thank you for joining us today. And I hope you enjoy this journey. We're going to take you upon a bit of the story of how this came about and some of the songs that are included in this um, journey. So now, whichever one of you would like to talk next, you're up. <laughs> so aloha. Uh, my name is Kapena Shim. I'm the archivist for the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation. And it's great to be with you all today to share the that my songbook with all of you and, and share the hard work that we put in for the last two years um, and share the music with all of you. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to um, first go over the overall songbook and I'm going to kind of show you all of that. And then we're going to go into specific song pages and we're going to highlight certain things from certain songs that we think are really, really valuable to share. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how we how we approach the songbook. Um, looking at each of our roles. And then at the end, we're going to talk about our hopes for the song, song book and then leave it open for questions. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll um, answer those at the end. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Lily Noy to introduce herself and then turn it back over to me and I'll walk us through the song book. Got to unmute yourself though. Aloha, Kako. I'm Lily Noy Andrews. Uh, I did the writing, the researching uh, for the songbook, and also did the translations. Uh, and so that was my role. Kapena. All right. So let's let's dive into it. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to give you a good overview of what's here and how to navigate the website. So this is the online songbook. It's completely free, completely accessible. It's also very mobile friendly. So if you're using your mobile devices, you should be able to access things quite easily. So here we have the, the opening, um, and here we have many images of, of Kupuna that, that really helped Eddie's journey, and even pictures of Eddie as well. Um, down here talks about the songbook. So the songbook is 34 songs, um, and each song is presented in a pu'olo or a bundle. And those contain lyrics and translation, song stories, educational questions, music sheets, audio and video clips, a biography, and many resources from the Kamai Archive. The Kamai Archive is super rich with audiovisual materials, but also a lot of print materials. And the Pu'olo really does a great job at highlighting all of those. So to get into the songbook and to explore the songs, click right over here, Explore Songs. We kept and you'll see. It's simpler because we had to have the anti-Myrna version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is important, super important. Um, and that was, that was our big goal. We want to make it simple. We want to make it clean. Um, so here you have the music page and you have this beautiful quote from Eddie. I wonder, 
I often wonder where music come, came from. I hear the answer in the songs that still mean the most to me by composers who not only wrote in Hawaiian, but they thought in Hawaiian. And down here, you can see a list of all the songs that we have. And these songs are really important songs that speak to Eddie's journey as a musician, as a filmmaker, and as a Hawaiian son. And a lot of these, these songs are songs that um, speak to Eddie's relationships with his teachers and what he's learned um, about Hawaiian music. Um, a lot of these songs are composed by um, Eddie and Myrna. Um, and a lot of these songs are just of, of influences that have shaped Eddie and his understanding of music. Um, like the Queen's music, Eddie loved the Queen's music and there's quite a bit of songs here from the Queen. So if you were to click a song, you're then taken to the Pu'olo. Uh, and this image will give you some glimpses of some of the interesting archival materials that are in the actual Pu'olo. Uh, you can download the Pu'olo right over here. Uh, but before we do that, um, this part over here, we'll talk a little bit about what the song is all about. So it says, you know, if it was composed by Queen Lido Koloni, it really speaks about the beauty, the beauty of Hanakioki and the romantic relationships there. But then it goes into sort of what this means for Eddie and what does it represent in Eddie's journey. So here it talks about how Hanakioki was a signature song for the Sons of Hawaii. You know, it was played in nearly every set um, and how Eddie just loved the Queen's music and how it was, it was such a definitive song and distinct song that represents the Sons in the 1970s. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can get the opportunity to actually listen to the song from our, from our audio. And then you can also listen along with the lyrics and the music sheets too. So you would press play. And then you can start to follow along. And then down here, we have a bunch of video clips from YouTube and, and Ulu Ulu, Ulu Ulu, the Moving Image Archive of Hawaii is our partner archive. And they've been helping us digitize all of our raw footage from our documentaries. It's a rich, rich repository of raw footage. And the songbook tries to bring in a lot of that around these particular songs. So here you can watch music performances across time, you know, from uh, the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s of, of Eddie and the Sons playing, which is beautiful. You can also see some clips um, from Ulu Ulu, like over here, if you click that. Um, you can get a clip from Ulu Ulu, the Moving Image Archive of Hawaii, of this raw footage tape. It's just a small little clip, a little preview. And if you wanted to see the full thing, you can actually ask them to send it to you as a streaming it's a file. Intrinsic part of that of that sound that they put together. I don't think Eddie sang too much. Maybe you did and blended in beautifully, but uh... who was the leader of that? And then over here, if you... Yeah, look, look, I, I get goose pimples already just talking about it, you know, I wonder. But this is Kurt Johnson, and Kurt Johnson is such an important person in Eddie's life. He's the one who introduced Eddie to Mrs. Mary Kavena Bukui and Pilahi Paki. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of an, an example of the Puolo. Now let's actually download the, pu the, the, the PDF Puolo version. Um, and this right over here will take you to the PDF. And you have the contents, which is the lyrics and translation, the song story, the bibliography, all the resources, the educational questions, the music scores about the songbook, about Eddie Kamai, and then acknowledgments. So here we have the lyrics and translation. They're footnoted. We have the song story. And there's always an opening uh, quote here. And then a link to that audio visual page that we just saw, um, because you recognize that this um, can just live on some PDF and we wanna make sure that it's in constant conversation with those audio visual materials. Um, and then here's the resources. Uh, so here we have handwritten lyrics and translations of Hanakioki from Pilahi uh, Paki. We have the cover of the album that Hanakioki was on, uh, the liner notes, which are super great to read. Um, some some photos, and then educational questions. And this is really unique to our songbook is because we wanted to make sure that 
um, the songbook is, is is a space for curriculum. And that ties directly into the mission of the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation and the mission that Eddie's three teachers always, always shared with them to do it for the children, um, to ensure that there's an educational mission. So here we have these educational questions that um, any learner can really can really engage with that helps to sort of unpack some of the song. And then we have the music scores and we have the original version. And for some, we'll have a transposed version, which is like an easier version, um, like the anti Myrna version. Um, and then we have the about the song book and then about Eddie Kamai and then the acknowledgements. So that's just an overview of what you can find for each entire song. And we're gonna spend a little bit of time going through some songs and highlighting certain things because each song presented a unique opportunity um, to learn something different about Eddie, something different about the archive and something different about a song um, and the composers that many of these songs are from. Um, going back though to the website, if you click about Eddie up here, you're gonna get that same story in the Pulo about Eddie right over here, but it's gonna be um, uh, shown with pictures. And this story is really beautifully written by Lily Noy. It, it talks about Eddie and his initial sort of upbringing and his time as a young musician. And then it starts to talk about his time with his three main teachers. So Mrs. Mary Kavana Pukui, uh, Sam Lee Kleinaina, and Pilahi Paki. And then it goes into his, his work, him and Myrna's work as filmmakers, and then their work with the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation. And then over here about the songbook talks about our work doing the songbook. So we have Eddie and Myrna, a little bit about them and, and their work with the foundation, how the project came to be, uh, you know, what were some of the core resources that we used. And a core resource that we used was the Hawaiian Sun, which is the uh, musical story of Eddie Kamai, the life and music of Eddie Kamai. Uh, and actually, if you go to the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation's website, this is this is for free. You just got to pay the shipping. So you can get this book for free. You just got to pay $10 for shipping. We have plenty of books to share. Uh, and then we have some notes about how we approach the translations, the lyrics, orthography, and then our hope. Um, and we'll get more into that later. Um, all right. So that's that's the website. Uh, on the home page, if you just go back there really quickly, if you scroll down a bit, you'll have some more links that will take you to those pages on the top. And then down here, we also have some information about how to access the songbook. We also have the Oli Aloha no Eri Kamai that Dr. Sam Ohukani Ohia Gon the uh, Third composed for Eddie and presented to him in 2012. Then we have a link to the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation website right over there. All right, but now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go through four songs um, that we think are pretty special to share. Um, the first one is Pua Lilia. Um, I'm gonna share that with all of you. And then Lily Noy is gonna share some and then Myrna is gonna share, share one with us. Um, so Pua Lilia, let me see here. Let me check time, time doing that time, okay. All right, so this is a, a, a great song. Um, and the reason why we, we picked this song is Alfred Olohikea wrote this song and Alfred Olohikea was a favorite composer of Eddie's. And Eddie just loved the poetry in his music. He loved the kauna and how exquisitely he wrote Ola the Hawaii, he wrote Hawaiian language um, and how that was presented in music and just how beautiful that all that is. But also important with this song for the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation is Mama Hale. Uh, Mama Hale was a close kupuna in Eddie's circle and she helped explain the kauna of this particular song. Um, and here, if we scroll down a bit, you can see a clip of her doing that um, alongside this really beautiful rendition of the song by Gary Haleabao. Um, so I'm gonna play that clip for you just so you can kind of feel and hear. Uh, uh, Mama Hale and hear the and hear the song. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit though. Coming down side of the mountain where this flower is. I'm gonna do it right there. And so this is the name of this lovely woman. Her name is Lilia. And the rain that's coming down side of the mountain where this flower is. 
and he'll notice that it has been plucked. He poor oi aku ia. You know, but can he in the inner pali? The rain is going up there to the pali. See the word popohe means it's it's a lovely flower. It's well shaped, well formed, and it's it's already been plucked. But even though it's been plucked, it's still a lovely flower. And he wants it. The Hawaiian people, they will sing a song just for just for the ordinary people to know that it's about a lovely flower. But intimately it's his own love affair with whoever he's singing about. And only those that are really know their language can really know how much he loves her. going to hear a little bit of the song yeah let, let me let me let me do that um i mean we can do it after lily noy talks about it but i just let me just yeah no, we, i got it yeah i promised it in my little in my little you know um uh precursor into sharing it so let me do that really quickly this is a little clip um want to keep hearing it and hearing it yeah it's so yeah, beautiful yeah. but you know the song book is up you can go to the you can go to the song and, and you can you can hear it on your own um, that should should be a little teaser for all of that um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to share a couple more songs and Lilino is going to do that so Lilino is going to share He Ilave and she's going to really highlight the diversity of resources that are in that puolo and then we're going to show some clips as well um, what's really beautiful about that song is is, is that there's um so many stories around Hi'i Lave and that song tries to that song story tries to sort of grapple with all of that and then next she's going to talk about Himele Lohono Waipio um and that song was a tricky song because there's so many different versions um so she's going to talk about her work as the researcher and translator and writer and writer for for the songbook um how she sort of approached that work um all right, so I'm gonna turn it over to you, Lily Noy. I'm gonna share my screen again, and you just guide me to where you want me to go on the um, the website. Okay. Aloha, this song, Hi'ilave, is um, a very famous song, and it's one of the reasons we picked it to share with you because so many people know this song. It was written by Sam Lia's father, Samuel, uh, Kalainaina, Kalainaina, and it was written at the end of the 1800s. And this song describes a love story. And the it's it's quite a, you can scroll you can scroll slowly scroll down, and maybe we can go into the song packet, the Puolo yeah. packet. And this song describes a love story and. What we wanted to share about this song is not only the fact that we have all the verses, which you normally don't hear sung. Um, we have them all here. This story comes from Sam Lia himself, that the song was written by his father and his father's sweetheart a woman named Pili Aloha. Now that could be her name. It could also just be a term of endearment, uh, meaning sweetheart. And we have several resources that go with this song story. And we're gonna get to those. We have some um, handwriting that show the original, the lyrics written by, do we know Kapena who? Yeah, These, yeah. This handwriting is? Yeah, yeah this, this is Sam Lia's handwriting. This is Sam Lia's handwriting. So he wrote mm -hmm. out the lyrics. Again, the song is not by Sam Lia, but by his father, Samuel Kalainaina. Some say senior, but 
but we just call him Samuel Kalainaina. And we have, we have that and we have from the Bishop Museum information on Sam Kalainaina Sr. Um, the Bishop did some ethnography studies on him. And we have notes in Eddie's handwriting about the story. And Sam Lia took Eddie and Myrna down into the valley and they went to Hi'ilave Falls. And Sam told them some of the versions of the stories that are popular about what Hi'ilave is about. And, but when they got back up to topside above Hi'ilave and they sat down and talked, that's when Sam shared the story of how the song was written by his father and his father's sweetheart. And that was transcribed and we have the notes from that. And that's what was just shown there. Also, it was disputed for a long time if Samuel Kalainaina was the actual author and it is the song has been attributed to other artists. However, we found the article in the newspaper that has the correct date and shows that of 1906 and shows that the song written by Sam Kalainaina predates the attributions to other songwriters. So we thought that was important to include. And this is a beautiful photograph of Hi'ilave Falls. And we have our educational questions. And then we have the sheet music, which you just saw. Kapena? Yeah, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some of the audio visual materials that we have for this too. So this, the great thing about this song is there's so many performances of Hi'ilave. So this one, um, we have uh, Eddie and the Sons performing for uh, the documentary, the first documentary, Lia, The Legacy of a Hawaiian Man. Um, so I'm going to show this one. And that's Brother Smitty. And I just love that clip. You just look at his smile, how much pride and joy he has in that song. Um, and then uh, we have this, which is Mama Hale singing the song um, and Eddie reflecting about that. So when she grabbed my ukulele on the stage and she goes, go out, cook, I can, yeah, he love it. And she goes, we go. Oh, oh, this is really nice, and everybody enjoyed. I said, "Wow, I'm glad that we I'm filming it at the time because here she is, strumming, singing, and he's shouting." I said, "I've never heard this before," but she was happy, so I had a feeling that was the old way. Oh yes, well, that's life. It keeps on going. And for me to see that, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, right. Kapiana, one other thing about that song, it was important for us to put all the verses to the song in there because when all the verses are shown, you can really understand the song better because it's a back and forth between two people. And mm -hmm. most of the time when you get the truncated version of it, you don't get that back and forth and you don't get the full story. So that was really important for us to include that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you ready to move on to Hemele Lohanoi Pio? Sure. 
Okay, perfect. The great thing about it was with really knowing, knowing the poetry and the language and us getting to talk every Saturday for two years and talk <laughs> about the different things, it really made it come alive for us. But it was her expertise and her deep knowledge of the language and the poetry that made all the difference and the story mm -hmm. about the songs. And it was, it was really an education for me too. But also too with Myrna, Mar Myrna is such a, a, a wealth of knowledge. She's such a library. And me and Lily Noy were sitting there learning so much from Myrna as she's uh, talking about these songs and talking about Eddie. And also, you know, Myrna did take Hawaiian language too. So, you know, she would also engage quite well um, in looking at our translations and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, so here's He Mele Lohono Waipio. Yeah, this, this song is really, it's really a love song that Sam Kalainaina, Sam Lia Kalainaina wrote for Waipio Valley and, they, and describes the beauty of the valley. He wrote it as a Christmas gift to um, John and Ginger Aluna uh, at Christmas time. And um, we captured Ginger's mana'o about it. And the challenging thing, I guess we can talk about this, this now and then share a clip of it later, but the challenging thing about this song is that we had six to seven versions of it to go through. And our, our, our real big challenge and our big goal was figuring out which one of these versions was the version that we would feature in the songbook. So what we had to do, or the way that I approached it was to put all the lyrics down in one place and compare them word for word, line for line, figure out which lyrics were unique to certain versions. And by process of elimination, we figured out which version was the main one. And you know, it's the prerogative of a composer to write different versions of their song, of a single song. And so we were, we felt really, really lucky to be able to look at six to seven different versions of a single song. And so that's uh, Hey Mele Aloha No Waipio. Yeah. I'm glad you did it. I'm glad I didn't have to try and do that. I could have never done it. It's such a incredible work of comparison and lyrics and different nuances of the language. I, I just think it's extraordinary. Yeah, and with the songbook, so this, this song is, is a, an important song because it's a song that isn't quite well known. Um, in the archive, we have so many songs of Samli Akalainainas, um, many of which are in the Samli documentary, but that's, that's the extent of it. So one of the big goals with the songbook is to really create a space to share the songs that were shared with Eddie, because Sam Lee Okalainaina shared those songs with Eddie so he can share with all of you. And that's what we're doing here. So we have really well-known songs like Ki'i Lave, but then we have lesser known songs like Himele Loho No Waipio. And then within the archive, like Lily Noah is saying, there are so many different versions. So how best to sort of, can we bring this archival material to you? So you and, and, and your family and your friends, um, and, and their classrooms, if they're in classrooms, can engage with them. So with this, uh, do you have anything else to add, Lilinoy, about this? I think that's good for this one. If you want to play a clip of the song, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. So let's play this one. Mm -hmm. 
And then over here, here's uh, John and Ginger Auna, um, also talking about the song and when uh, their tutu gave it to them for Christmas. Uh, all right. Okay, so now what we're, we're going to do is we're going to talk about morning dew, a cool morning dew we have, and we're going to have Myrna share that with all of us. Um, so Myrna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the, the song, and if you want to just talk about um, how that song came to be, that special day, uh, your dinner party. By the way, Kapena, what song are you going to share? <laughs> I, share I shared Pua Lilia. Well, okay. <laughs> see how time goes, yeah. Okay, well, Morning Dew is such an epic journey. It'll probably take a little time. The original name of the song was Morning Dew, but like a lot of Hawaiian songs, it um, ended up being the title really that most people know and love is from the first line of the song, A Ku'u Morning Dew. So that's the title that ended up uh, being the one that's most popular. Now, we were having dinner at our house with uh, Larry Kimura. I was taking Hawaiian from him. I was auditing his first year, first semester class. My friend had told me, Here's this young guy, he's just coming back from the military and he has this beautiful way of speaking. It's like the kupuna speak and he has poetry in the language. And so Eddie was really happy that he, he actually wanted me to learn how to type his music. And that was the main goal of, of getting me to go to a Hawaiian language class. But we're sitting at dinner and all of a sudden Eddie excuses himself and goes um, to the uh, other room. And we both thought it was a little strange that he gets up in the middle of dinner, but he comes back. And in those days, Eddie was doing so much recording that um, and going out into the field and stuff. So he always had a, a tape recorder handy um and i think are we viewing you kapena um or are we viewing me <laughs> i think v viewing you um oh okay but, uh, I, yeah. I see you i'd rather see you any day than me so we'll just keep doing that anyway so let, let me stop sharing the screen and i think we can see you there oh yeah okay well whatever um, works fine. Um, anyway, Eddie came back with this recording and he said, I want you and Larry to hear something. And so he played back this beautiful music that he'd been hearing while we were having dinner. It just, it, he could hear the music. And Larry and I were astounded because here's this beautiful tune. And it, in, Larry said, well, Eddie, what kind of song do you think this is? And Larry said, it's a love song. And so Eddie thought it was a love song too. Later on, Eddie said, I wrote it for you. And I like to think that that's true. <laughs> but um, so that night, Eddie asked Larry to write the Hawaiian lyrics. And we started working on an English version too. But the beautiful poetry of Larry really came to um, came with this song, and he'd written one verse, and he wrote it down for us at a, a party we had. And Eddie said, "I think it needs another verse." And so um, Larry said, "Well, I'm going to Kalapana this summer, and I'm going to be teaching, and I'll write the other verse." So he calls Eddie one day toward the end of the summer and said, I've got it. So there's one verse and a chorus. And we went up there and Eddie looked at the words, the lyrics that Larry had written, and he played it with the music and it worked perfectly. There wasn't any change at all. Mm -hmm. And then the beautiful translation 
And the idea that being at Mana, this place um, outside of Waimea, that, you know, like the morning dew, the love will be there and last forever in that high elevation. And then the song kind of evolved. You know, uh, Eddie always wanted to have an English version to it. It's not an exact translation, though the first verse is very close and a later version came closer. But Eddie heard, just like he heard the voice of Mo Kiali singing the first, the first um, for the first Hawaiian verse, verses, the first Hawaiian rendition of the song, he heard Melvin Lee doing the English. And it just so happened she was going to Na Nashville. And maybe you can show the, the different people um, uh, on, on the screen, Kapena. But when she went to Nashville, she was recording with some very famous musicians and they did it in one take. And she loves the whole thing, all the verses. And I'm telling her, oh, I think maybe this verse would be better not sung. And she, no, I love those verses. And she actually got a Hoku Award for this song. And this is at that presentation of the Hoku Awards. And Melvin still looks fabulous, I'll tell you. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and then Jay Laren, Eddie said, ask Jay to do a prologue to this song. And so I called Jay and he said, I'm going out. Uh, can we do it another time? And I said, no, we got to do it right now. We'll come and pick you up and take you wherever you have to go. Well, Jay said these words. Softly comes the dawn, the wind of night, the winds of night are gone. Now comes the morning dew and memories of you. And like the morning dew, I'll always think of you shining in the sun when you and I were young. Hmm. And I mean, he just, I just wrote down the words down as fast as I could because he, you know, and he didn't tell me till many years later that those words had actually come to him driving on the saddle road on the big island. So then there was always the, the feeling that we wanted to have it a little closer to the original lyrics and also to have the poetry that we always found in what Jay Laren did with us. And so then My Morning Dew, which has been recorded by Jay Laren, um, and a closing verse by him. So that is the epic journey of Morning <laughs> Dew. And uh, it, it's something that is close to my heart and actually the most popular of all the songs that we have ever recorded. And maybe you can share a little bit of it with, um, I don't know if you have that close by, but maybe a little yeah. bit of the song. Um, yeah, can. And it, I don't know, since you're so good at pulling things up, um, well, I was gonna have them see the poetry of um, um, the Hawaiian, but let's hear a little of the song. <laughs> For my wife Myrna in 1973, and our friend, he, he lives. Oh, oh. That's okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Close by in the American War. So we wrote the song together. Yeah. Softly comes the dawn, the winds of night are gone. Now shines the morning. Memory of you and like the morning news, I'll always read of you whispering to me and dreams of love. 
<laughs> I just love that song. Oh my. Oh my gosh. What a beautiful, beautiful clip. Okay. And, and, and in the Puolo, that epic journey that Myrna shared is all in there. So if you wanted to look at those three different versions, it's all there. Um, the song story is all there. The images are all there. The music performances are there. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful puolo that really talks about that love um, of morning dew. So with that, we're gonna now switch gears. We covered the songs you wanted to, to share with all of you to just give you little teasers. So hopefully it's encouraging you to go to the songbook and explore it on your own and um, find, find what you can find there. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk in the short time that we have um, really sort of about how we approach this songbook, what we aim to do um, in the work that we did with the songbook. So um, Myrna, if you want to just share a little bit about why this is so important um, for you and Eddie, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of how we approach this work. And then Lily Noy is going to talk a little bit about how she approached the research and the writing for this work. Well, Eddie's teachers, Mary Kavana Pukui, Pilahi Paki and Samli Akwainaina all said the same thing to Eddie. The whole thing to do is to share this with the children so it will live forever. And so that's what Eddie really wanted. And I hope that everybody watching and listening to this today will share this with their family and their friends and any educators. We're really going to work hard to get this into the schools and to make sure that Eddie's wishes for it to live on will, will happen. And that maybe it'll be a prototype for what other people can do. Mm -hmm. uh, to do this same kind of thing with the many beautiful songs that there are to share. Yeah. And the way we, we approach this song, because it was tricky because Myrna would always give me songs. She's like, okay, what about this song? What about this song? So I'd have a running list of songs that Myrna wanted to include in the song book, but we only had a little bit, a limited time. Um, so we had to really cut things down and we had to ensure that the songs that we picked were really representative of Eddie's journey um, Eddie has a remarkable journey to have Eddie, who is the legend that we know Eddie today, um, to know that he didn't even want to play Hawaiian music growing up. So how did that happen? Like, how did he go from not wanting to play Hawaiian music to being the Eddie Kamai that we know today? And that songbook really shares that story with all of us. Um, and it's an inspirational story. It's a story that I think all of us can resonate with in, in, in some way, um, little tidbits, perhaps. So we really wanted to honor Eddie and his story and his musical journey as a musician, as a filmmaker, but as a Hawaiian son, because um, that's sort of the foundation for all of this work. Um, but we also wanted to honor Eddie's three teachers that, Mary, um, that uh, Myrna just shared with us. You know, those three teachers were such a guiding force in Eddie's life. And we wanted to ensure that the songs that are in this songbook represent that relationship and share that relationship and share those teachings that have been the foundation for Eddie and Myrna's work, um, with the foundation, with everything that they've done. So we wanted to share and honor his teachers, but we also wanted to, to honor the many kupuna that were also part of Eddie's world and their teachings and their wisdom. Um, and Eddie really tried to be a cultural bridge with all of this knowledge that he was so blessed to be a part of. Um, and we wanted to ensure that the songbook is that bridge as well. And then we also wanted to share the archive. The archive is so rich with information. Uh, we've invested so much money in digitizing our raw footage with Ulu Ulu. All of those clips, all of those music performances, all of those interviews are all freely available through Ulu Ulu. And we're still working through some, so through some documentaries, but the bulk of the documentaries have been digitized and that raw footage is available. Um, so we want to make sure that we're connecting and making that, that archival materials relevant and visible today. Uh, but then also 
how do we also bring our physical print and photograph archives to life as well and bring that into um, the songbook. So we wanted to do all of that as we as we approach the creation of the song book. And I'll turn it over to you, Lily Noy, uh, to share about your process. Thanks, Kapena. Um, I was really honored to be asked to work on this project. I um, considered it to be a mammoth undertaking. Um, one of the things that was most important to us was accuracy. Accuracy and including all voices. So as much information and as wide a possible net as we could cast, we did and as much information as we could get, we included in this. So that meant not only pulling from the Hawaiian Sun book, but pulling from everything Myrna could possibly throw at us, but also going into the Hawaiian language newspapers, the English language newspaper archives, um, other books, magazine articles, and anything we could find that would help flesh out the stories, as well as tell Eddie's story and especially highlight the lessons that he learned from these songs that came into his life somehow, whether he composed them or whether he discovered them through hearing, hearing parts of them or hearing them played by somebody else and sort of making them his own. Uh, we wanted to include any information that would help shed light on that. And it was important to us to uh, get all of the Hawaiian correct for the lyrics and um, line everything else up as well. Kapena? All right. And now we're going to transition into our hope. So now it's tasked to, to, do, to do this. Um, and I was thinking about, about this. I cannot help but think about this clip that I've seen of Eddie, and it's in the songbook of him talking about Samli Akalainaina. Samli Akalainaina was such an important figure in person in his journey as, as a musician. And when he talked about him, he talked about how he was a man of aloha and how when he shared his music, he shared it with aloha. And it's in that same spirit that we wanna share this songbook with you. We wanna share it in the spirit of aloha. Um, we hope that as you look through this songbook, uh, that you find materials in here that will touch your touch your hearts, uh, really speak to your minds and, and move your spirit. Um, that's all we can really hope with the songbook. There's just so much in there. Um, and we hope that this um, moves you, but then also helps to keep the music alive too and helps keep the music shared um, amongst your friends and your family and your colleagues so that it can live on and the teachings that it represents, the stories that it represents, the wisdom that it represents can continue on. Um, so that's that's our hope. And Myrna and Lilinoi, please jump in um, as, as you wish. Uh, well, Kapana, I think that one of the things too is that we hope other people tell their stories. We hope mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. if we can share this, uh, this songbook with the schools that uh, students can tell their stories from their families, but people that interact with the songbook can also tell their family stories. That's so important. And so we hope that this is a, a vehicle to inspire people to do that. Yeah. And I want to thank Roger Jelnick for doing this incredible Hawaii book and music festivals for so many years and to give us an opportunity to share our stories in, in a way that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So I think um, if there, it, we're probably out of time. I think I'm looking at the questions, but I'm not sure if there's questions or just comments there, but I think we're about out of time. Roger, um, you can tell us We've got, actually, we've got about five minutes, and I would love you to use them to play some of Eddie Kamai's songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my, there, there is so many choices. Um, 
Well, well we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end with with Kel Lekajip as as we're sort of coming to the end. But is there any questions? Uh, we did want to make time for questions, uh, so please put them in the chat, uh, or you can even. Uh, I don't know if you could turn your audio on. I, I'm not sure if that works with this webinar sort of style, but uh, but yeah, in the chat, just please if you have questions. I know we have people, Chris um, M Miller from Maryland, and it's probably one o'clock in the morning there. And we have uh, David Kinney from San Diego. I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at some of the. Uh, and aloha, aloha to you, BJ. I see you're in there, in there as well. Yeah. So play, play some songs. Okay, let's. Uh, we're gonna play Kiala Kajit. Um and this song is a special song. Special song, uh, recalling the journey of Eddie and Myrna when Mrs. Pukui took them down to Kau, her childhood home. Uh, so Not a clip. That. A whole song. <laughs> you want the whole song? <laughs> you want the well, whole song? Okay, yeah. Well, you know, we're going to mention all the places. We're going to do the Jeep ride. Um, and this was a, a beautiful day. And at the end of the day, we went back to Uncle Willie Meineke's place. And Kaven and I started working on the Hawaiian lyrics. You can see on screen now where I had actually written the English first. And Kavena, you know, uh, dictated the Hawaiian. She was so fast. You just play the music and tell him the thought, tell her the thought, and she just would go for it. Unbelievable, um, incredible. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it. The Road of the Jeep. Do you do you have any of the video? I think the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I did see a question. So I, I know we have three minutes. So I did want to. Um, uh, so Bobby Best asked, um, Bobby from Maui wonders about Myrna's upbringing and how she met Eddie. So you want to share a little bit about how you met Eddie? Oh, very quickly. I met him on Christmas Day in Lahaina, Maui. Uh, he was there to play music for his mother. And um, I had gone to uh, Lahaina to help some friends take over a restaurant. And he was with his roommate, which I was always happy was not a girl, it was Raymond Connie, and sitting on the lanai playing this beautiful sake guitar and this wonderful Martin ukulele with these two fabulous musicians. I hadn't really ever heard Hawaiian music in this authentic form before. And I just stood by the door for two hours listening. And my boss came up to me and said, dude, I know who those musicians were. And I said, no. And he told me they're two very famous musicians, Eddie Kamai and uh, Raymond Connie. And then he asked me if I'd go open the restaurant. And I thought, kind, I, I felt kind of bad because I thought, I'll never see that ukulele player again. <laughs> but that night he came up with his cousin and was playing music. And um, then we went into Lahaina together and watched the Maui moon go into the ocean. And so I fell in love with the music first, but the man soon after. Uh, 
and I was with him for over 50 years. He passed away in 2017, but here we're able to share his legacy with you. Thank you. He played, I think, at least twice at the festival, thanks to you. Yes, yeah. he did. And he loved it. He loved being there with the audience, playing the music, being a part of the festival, sharing his book, sharing the music. It's just a rare opportunity for us to have this venue. And I know it's a lot of hard work, Roger, and I, I, I don't want to hear that you're giving it up anytime soon, but I, we really appreciate what you've done for all of us. Well, what we're praying is it will be in person next year because um, you just don't get the serendipity of, of, you know, of an in-person event, you know? We would have people who came just to support somebody in, in a halal or, or a speaker or a writer. And they would, they would not have realized that what else was there. And they intended to be there for an hour, maybe. And they'd end up being there three, four hours or coming back the next day. And the next year they would spend six hours each day. So we had, um, we were getting between 15 and 20,000 people over two days. Just, that's a very different feeling and a very different kind of event from what we're trying to do here. So uh, we've, we've evolved. Uh, we're not simply a book and music festival now. We're an ideas festival as well. Um, but that's just because uh, you know, we realize people have many different kinds of interests. And so we're trying to reflect that. And, uh, but I'm very grateful for this particular event. It was quite wonderful. Thank you. And what an enterprise. Mahalo nui for having us. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Ahui. I'm going to play the rest of the song um, while we sort of, you know, end our time here so you can you can hear that. Um, and But feel free to, to go to the songbook and learn more.
wonderful. Thank you. So now I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.